Okay, great. So let us can, let us go. So uh, we were discussing um, different aspects of tzedakah, and we're in the middle of discussing um, whether or not tzedakah is more like a mitzvah, or um, you know, alternatively, more like a monetary obligation. Um, so, with respect to this, I just want to try to point out um, how the um, how the Rajba and the Ran um, take very opposite views of this question. So let me uh, explain. So we were, I think we were discussing the Gemara and Rosh Hashanah. So let's go back to that. So the, the does, first, it, does it have to be one or the other? I mean, what what yeah. what, what's the between those two? There are two different ideas. My idea is that it's that it's both, um, and that it's both maybe even broken down by the Mitzvah Sase and the Mitzvah Sase. Right. But, There's a famous question, of the, why don't you make a bracha when you give tzedakah, right? Yeah, I mentioned because, that. Because it, oh, it was a recipient can deny it, right? So there are two, and two, two or three answers given to that question. So one answer that's given is that the recipient can, you know, can refuse, in which case it would be a bracha levatala. There's another answer that's given in the Rishonim, and that is that it's not, you know, um, it's a myth of an alam lechabeiro, not a mitzvah ben adam lemakom, <coughs> therefore there's no bracha. So, is that true? There's no there's no mitzvah ben adam lechavera ever. The, there's no bracha ever ben adam lechavera. That's, that's one view in the Rishonim. In, in general, you don't make brachos. For example, uh, you know, there's no bracha for the haftal or the no Or bracha. visiting someone sick, you don't make a bracha, right? Correct. So, so um, according to the view that says that the reason that there's no bracha. Is because um, it's it's a mitzvah ben adam, you know, the The emphasis is very much on like you know the, the help that you're giving, not so much that you your need to be a donor, but you know his status as you know as a recipient. Whereas the other answers say basically, yeah, you should make a bracha. So I mean, what I, what I was trying to show in the last couple, you know, last uh, you know week in particular, is that there are a lot of issues that um, are connected to this topic. For example, as I mentioned, another one. Um, the Gemara says in the Darim that <coughs> the principle of osik the mitzvah patam and mitzvah applies to tzedakah. <coughs> the Gemara says that if you um, are a shomer aveda, which means you pick up an object in the street, <coughs> so um, there's a debate whether you're a shomer chinam or a shomer sachar, meaning you you have to watch the object that you pick up for, on behalf of the owner. Um, and the question is, what is your status? Are you considered to be a Shomer Chinam? Because you're doing it, there's no contract between them. He doesn't even know that you found his object, right? Um, or are you a Shomer Sakhar? What's the, what's the schar? Shomer Sakhar means like you're being paid for it. So the Gemara says that you might be a Shomer Sakhar because when you are um, watching somebody else's object, that takes time and effort. And sometimes it distracts you legally, halakhically from other mitzvahs. So, you know, frees up your time, but also your money. So the Gemara says that if, a, if, a, if an ani were to, um, were to knock on your door, right, then, um, you know, you could say to him, listen, uh, right now I'm busy. I'm being a Shomer Veda. <laughs> so that is the scar of Shomer Sakhar. So the question is this. Uh, if somebody owes you, um, if somebody, you know, a lova, meaning a, um, I'm sorry, a malva, a, de a creditor knocks on your door and he says, you know, I came to collect the money that you owe me, right? You wouldn't be able to say to him, Ose commits a patram la mitzvah, presumably. So the idea that Ose commits a patram mitzvah applies to tzedakah, um, like the view that says that in principle it should be a bracha, even though in practice there isn't, all point to the idea that this is more like a regular mitzvah. More like well, I, I understand what Isaac mitzvah. First of all, it doesn't work that way. If you didn't give your 10%, you still have to give it. You can't say because you're learning, you don't have to give tzedakah. How, how does Isaac mitzvah work over here by tzedakah? I don't understand. If somebody knocks on your door, right? So typically you have to, that that triggers an obligation too, right? There's a lo ta'ameitz levavcha, you know, and lo tikbo tzadcha, and pasoak tiftach, and nasom titen. So the the question of how much tzedakah you give 
you know, um, a year or from all of your belongings, that's, that's one kind of an issue. But there are situations in which you're obligated to give tzedakah at the moment. Yeah, but then if, if, if someone's giving a shear, I'm saying, and then someone knocks on the door of tzedakah, you don't have to stop giving the shear. Well, so what that, about... That's I'm what sorry? the Gemara says, right? That the Gemara says that osa mitzvah patur and mitzvah applies to tzedakah. But when I'm trying to, or if you're... Uh, I got it. Man, that's exactly the point. But if somebody, let's say you owed somebody money and he knocked on the door, would you be able to say to him, I'm giving a shear now, or I'm... I mean, let's say the, the the it's a it's a monetary obligation. Or I, I mean, you you can have this conversation with any other mitzvah, right? I'm saying some. Mitzvah, uh, uh, I mean, you have, have to balance mobile. life. What I'm saying is the chiyuve mamon. There's we're not aware that in chiyuve mamon there's a principle of osik mitzvah patur mechiyuv mamon, but there is a bit there is a din of osik mitzvah patur na mitzvah. So the more you see tzedakah as purely, that's not if you have a prior mitzvah. obligation. In other words, your, your example with the Malva, he already indebted himself prior to the to the interaction. The guy's only coming to get that which he already committed to earlier, before the mitzvah. So right, but it was, uh, it was 30 days ago, you know. So, uh, but it's not, you know, you could come back, uh, you know, uh, you could come back in another hour or two. So I don't think that's the issue. The issue is more that the principle of Osek Mitzvah, I mean, you know, it's uh, it's it's a it's a klal which is said about mitzvahs. It's not a klal that is said about yuve mamo. I'll give you another example. The um, I say some of the achronim discuss the question of uh, an onain. An onain is of, as we know is somebody who misha He um, you know uh, he he's suffered. Torah, he's torrid in the mace. What? And he's so somewhat torrid in the in the. In the yeah. So he's an onain, and he's patur min mitzvos. When a person is uh, sadly in a state of aninus, he doesn't make brachos, he doesn't uh, he doesn't daven, right? Um, but if he's an onain, you, it doesn't make him patur from paying his uh, financial debts. Oh, but he's also chayiv and laven. He's only part of maseh. Okay, right. So uh, actually, uh, in a tshuva uh, uh, of uh, Rabbi Shlomo Zalman Orbach. The Colonel of Racha, Mincha Shlomo, so he says, you know, he discusses his question. He says, uh, would an Onain be part of the Mitzvah Sadaka? So he says what you said a little bit, or he starts saying what you said, which is, well, uh, an Onain still has a prohibition of Lavin and Sadaka, is Pasof, Tiftach, and Nasum Titim, but it's also Lota Ametz and Lo Tikbots Yadcha, which are Lavin. But he says, uh, that's, not so, that's not so simple because. It depends how you look at these lavin and these essen. This is something that we've been discussing, you know, a few times. And that is, when there are lavin and essen together, the, the question always is, are they two different mechaibim, two different categories, two different aspects, which is what I'm saying about tzedakah, and, you know, would help here. You asked me before, does it have to be one or, or the other? The I do is that it's both, it's the ase and the lav. But in some cases, when we have an ase and a lav, they really are the same, and one is just a reinforcement of the other. So what Rabshul Mazalman Arbach says... Which is reinforcing which? Yeah, exactly. So what he <laughs> says is, if the lab in here are just reinforcing the assay, but it's really, really an assay, then there would be a paturone. But if it's, you know, either... He doesn't say this, as I'm saying. If either the assay is just reinforcing the lab, or what Equal. I really think, which is for, for the re... The partner. And for the Rambam, which is that there are two different dinim. There's a mitzvah like all mitzvahs, and then there is, uh, you know, a lav. But, and, and one is like a monetary obligation, mm -hmm. and the other is, you know, more of a, but, a but, mitzvah, you know, mitzvah sagabra. But, so then but, the, the answer would be that the onin is exempt from the pasach tiftach nason titain part, but he's not exempt from the lo ta'amets and the little tick box part, which but, is a very interesting but, conclusion. But 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 the case of Sadaka, I'm a little confused. You know, usually you can give Sadaka later. It has to you have to create a case where the one is gonna lose it. In other words, most yeah, cases, Sadaka, case, let's say somebody knocks on your door. Where the Ramam has the law that the Ramam speaks about is low. And you can't find them. Malim Ainav Minaniim. It means if you encounter an ani that you're not supposed to. You know, just turn your back. It sounds like in the context of the encounter. 
But the timing question we'll get to in just a minute is very relevant to that as well. So let me say it this way. And the same you, problem with Rosh Hashem to and, and then you have the same problem with all sig the, the signal with the fact that you have a say to, re to return what you stole. So how does that match up to, to you? Well, that's certainly a financial you know, type of obligation, meaning Hashavas. But it also Zayla. comes on the back of a loss, I said. Yeah, but that, I'm saying there it's even more. Uh, there it's clearly dominant. Right. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I was there, in the stealing case. Yeah, the lav, Tigzal or Los Ignovu is the key. And then it's Nita class A because, you know, it's Nita Latashlumin or Gzelav, Heshav Sagdala Shagazal. But um, it's clear that, like, you know, that's not a mitzvah given the context. That's the, you know, uh, you, you know that's a benefit you know, when you're discharging the financial part of your obligation. So let me say it this way. <laughs> there are, um, like there are some mitzvahs that include a monetary component, right? But the monetary component is just peripheral. It's just, you know, a means to an end, or it's, you know, kind of a, a necessary, you know, um, aspect, but it's not, not the, the defining part of it. For example, um, Dalad Minin, right? So, um, you know, you have to take a little bit of Estrogen, Hadassim, and Arabos. It costs money, and it's Lachem. You can't even borrow the first day. It costs money. These days, it costs a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so um, I don't know what the going rate is in Manhattan. or, or Including uh, the magnifying glass that you have to buy. To, 100%. So, you know, it is a, you know, there is a uh, financial aspect to it. But no one would say... That the financial aspect is anything more than a means to an end. It's it's instrumental, meaning the mitzvah is to do the mitzvah to to take the the minim. But of course, you can't acquire the minim, and you need to acquire them for lachem, without uh, writing a check or or whatever, selling some bitcoin, um, whatever whatever it is you have to do to get the um, dollar minim. But at the end of the day, um, there's a financial, you know, component to it, but it's not at all. A financial mitzvah, right? It's a ben adam lamakom. It's a ritual mitzvah. It's a chiyuv agavra, and you know the financial part is just totally, 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 um, you know, a side issue. Um, compare that. Let's take go the exact opposite extreme for a moment. So what we're talking about now is we're, we're we're kind of looking at the world of Torah and mitzvos, you know. So um, you know the phenomena phenomenology of this. There is more than one type of mitzvah where we talk about the role of, of um, finances. So let's go the other direction. <clears throat> so the Gemara at the end of Bava Basra, when it talks about a, uh, a, a debtor and a creditor, a Malvin Alova, so the Gemara has a, a debate whether we say Shibuda Doraisa, I'll explain what I mean in a minute, or Priyas Balchov Mitzvah. What is Shibuda Doraisa? Shibuda Daraisa means that, um, you know, if I owe money personally to you, if I borrowed money from, from you, Ruvain borrowed money from Shimon, so Ruvain owes, has to repay Shimon. Shibuda Daraisa says that not only does he have to repay him, but the properties that he owns, like if he has uh, landed property and so on, are also mortgaged or leaned to the repayment of that loan. It's called Shibuda Daraisa. So that, that's a very expansive, that's not so obvious, that's a very expansive idea of financial um, obligation, meaning it not only impo is imposed upon me personally, but all the property that I own also secures my debt. Okay? So that is a very important, that's a, like, and, and it's very understandable, that view, because the idea of repaying a debt is a purely financial idea, one would think. However, there's another view in the Gemara which says that Shibuda is lav I mean, it's not true that Minatora, all your assets, you know, will, um, you know, cover, you know, or secure the collection of this debt. Not true. You're obligated to pay. You have to dig into your pocket or write a check or whatever. But your karka and your, if once you sell it, certainly, is not lean to the property. But what's fascinating is that the Gemara, when they characterize this other view, instead of just saying Shibuda Lav Doraisa, use the expression Priyas Balchov Mitzvah. 
which makes it seem like that repaying the debt isn't a chiyu, but a mitzvah. And they do discuss, the Gemara in Erechen discusses, when it talks about Yisomim, let's say, um, you know, Yisomim um, um, inherit, you know, the, um, the estate of their father, and he owed money. So the Gemara discusses whether if you hold Priyas Balkov mitzvah, so um, if they're ketanim, if they're minors, then, you know, ketanim are la b'nei mevet mitzvah ninu. So they don't, as long as they're ketanim until they, you know, come of age, maybe they wouldn't have to repay the debt. Rabbi, I the discussion in the Gemara. So, uh, yes. I just wanted to ask, so if someone fails to repay a loan, yeah. that is tantamount to lo tignov. Well, uh, you, we'll you get don't to own it. You're not repaying it. Anyway, I don't want to uh, get into the details, but, but it's net, isn't it? That's called, that's no. called hafkas halva asa. It's a, it's a, um, hafkas halva asa is, um, is a form of gazelle, but it's not actually, it's not lo signovu and it's not lo sigzal, but it is, it's like oshek skar sacher. It's like not, uh, it's what happens if you refuse to pay, uh, you know, a worker. Same idea. So it is an aspect of Gazela, but we're not there yet. We're, we're not talking about him not paying. We're talking about why he has to pay. <laughs> what is the reason that he has to pay? So, um, no, 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 because it, it's, it's just that we know people. So, for example, uh, purposely uh, fail to, 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 to pay their debt. Yeah. And at the end, it ends up being theft because. Well, it's a kind of theft. It's called Hafka Asaba Asa. Yeah. So, um, right. So that's related, but what that highlights is that, you know, of course, there's an obligation to repay. But is this obligation purely financial and therefore it includes your assets? Or is it personal? And if it's personal, is there any mitzvah component? So what I'm trying to tell you is that when there is an estate um, and there are minor um, um, minors, you know, who inherit the estate, so the Gemara says in Erchen, one view that they don't have to pay as long as they are children, right? Because of the principle of Ketanim la b'nei meved mitzvah nenu. Whereas if you hold Shibuda Daraisa, then it's purely financial. Well, the assets just cover it, you know, anyway. But I think we all agree, and this is, I think, what you're asking, and I agree with your question, is that, you know, even if you use the words Priyas Balchov mitzvah, which means paying back a debt is a is a mitzvah. You don't really mean that it's only a mitzvah because it's certainly an obligation. Um, and as you point out, if you refuse to pay, you know, in general, or if you're co-fair, you you deny the uh, the debt. There are you know uh, there are consequences you know in terms of gazel and so on. So everybody will agree that even though we use the phrase prayers balchov mitzvah, right? It's more than a mitzvah. Now that's in sharp contrast to, that's in one extreme, that's in sharp contrast to the other extreme that I mentioned before. You have to build a sukkah and it costs uh, $300. You have to buy lulav and esrog and that costs, you know, $100 or $150. So, but no one thinks those are financial, you know, primarily financial issues. But repaying your debt is primarily a financial issue, even according to the mandamar priyas bachov mitzvah. Now, Let's think about a couple of cases in between the two extremes. Everybody with me? So let's think about um, Pidjon Haben. Okay? What is Pidjon Haben? Right? If you have a, um, you know, firstborn son, right? O only Yisrael, not a Levi or a Kohen, right? Correct. Not, not the child of a Levi or a Kohen. So um, you have to oh, uh, you have to undergo pigeon aben. What is what do you how do you undergo pigeon aben for this child? You give five uh, shkalim right to the kohen. Now this is a very interesting case because you know you're not repaying a debt. It's not primarily financial in that respect. I mean, mostly we would consider it to be a ritual obligation, right? Um, on the other hand, uh, it's not only incidentally financial either. In other words, you know, in order to get Dalad Minim and to build a sukkah, you know, and, and to eat uh, matzah, 
you know, you have to make um, a financial payment. But, you know, you can't compare that to Pidgin Aben. Pidgin Aben, the, the mitzvah itself is to pay a certain amount. But, but Again, it's not ben, like, don't have it's enough not like, one second, it's not like Piron Balkhov, which is about repaying a debt, right? Which is purely financial. Even if you call it Prius Balkhov Mitzvah, it's still a financial obligation, right? But it is not like Sukkah and Matzah and Shofar and Dalad Minim either. So you know what the Gemara, the Gemara calls Pidgin Aben? They call it a Milva Haksuva Batora. There are a few things like this, meaning it's a it's a it's a monetary obligation, but not imposed by the relationship of the parties, but imposed as a ritual obligation by the Torah. But it also so has a weakness. What's that? It has a weakness also in the fact that it's not an obligation any specific coin. Consequently, the the uh, the creditor has a very weak position. <laughs> right. Correct. Because he, mamon, it's mamon and mamon, mamon kahuna, makire kahuna may apply or may not apply. Very, very correct. So, but you can see that, you know, um, between the two extremes of Prius Balkov mitzvah and, um, and you know, a monetary um, instrumental, you know, investments to, to perform ritual mitzvahs, pigeon abed is something in between. Another in between. Isn't the difference between whether it's the means to accomplishing the mitzvah, like Lulav and Esri? Yeah, correct. Or whether it's the essence of the mitzvah. The essence of the mitzvah is I must pay something. I don't know if the five shkolem is the raisa. Right, okay. right, right. No, yeah, that's I'm what not... we're saying. Isn't that what but, we're saying? Yeah, I'm saying so. That, yeah. so it's but, you, but it's still not priyas balchov mitzvah, which is a pure financial obligation. Quid pro quo, right? So let me give you another example, Hanukkah's Eved, right? In, uh, when you have an Eved, we don't have them anymore, but when you have an Eved, the Torah says when the Eved is Yotze Lecheros, you know, when he leaves your, um, your service, so you listen, you know, to, you know, to his liberation and, you know, his termination of his service, there's a requirement of Hanukkah's Eved. Hanik Taniklo, right? Hanik Taniklo means you are, you are obligated to give him like a severance present. Now, severance good heart. Is, a, is a very interesting idea, right? And even now, I think even in all, our culture, it's not so clear what severance really is, right? One way to look at severance is that it's, you know, um, it's not officially money for services rendered. Hey, you look at it as a kunas also. You can look at it as a knas, you can look at it as a matana, yeah. or you can look at it as a kind of additional tashlumin, meaning I shouldn't be able to get away with tashlumin, you know, only according to the letter of the law, because, you know, service is an element of service, which transcends, you know, the pure, pure financial part. So from a, and in another respect, from a financial point of view, right, you know, um, I owe him, you know, beyond his servants, his service. So what is that? Is that? But, but isn't the payment of an evidentiary because we say that the brachas of, that because of an evidentiary, the ball ball gets certain brachas of a what's Yeah, good, right. So I'm saying, but the, you can understand. Oh, he owes them. Now the Hanukkah, like the pigeon aben, takes the form of money, or or at least of uh, material goods, right? Um, but whether you look at it as more of a matana or a kind of a tashlumin or a kind of a knas, whatever you. That's kind of open, open. It's not like Dalid, uh, Minim, and Sukkah, and Lulav, and so on. Not a clear. But it's also not Priyas Balchov Mitzvah. Correct? It's like Pigeon. I'm not saying it's exactly like Pigeon Aben, but it's it's uh, like Pigeon Aben. It's in the middle. So are we saying there's a continuum of. of yes. Of, I am saying there's a continuum. I'm trying to, pro to pro you know, project a certain perspective about the range of uh, mitzvos in which there's a monetary component and I'm suggesting that there are this, you know, that there are different, you know, categories here. So uh, another category to think about is something like erchen, right? Erkelai, right? This, this uh, part that we're gonna read this has erchen in it. So, right, bechukosai. So, um, uh, 
a person kind of it's like uh, an adobe, it's like an edda, no? He makes a donation to the um you know to the base of Mikdash, but Someone's the donation about. is based on a uh, well, valuation of him, an objective valuation, not of him personally, but his age, his uh, his gender, uh, however that's defined, you know. But the Torah has specific sums, you know, for that. So erchin isn't the tashlumin; it's not prias but it, but it, but the financial aspect is also not purely instrumental. How is it different than another? Well, a nether doesn't have to be. So now let's talk about Nidre Tzedakah, but Nidharim don't per se have to be about money. Many Nidharim are not about money at all, right? The Nidharim can be about bringing a korban. It, it could be... Oh. So now let's talk about Staka, which is our topic, right? And let's talk about two aspects of Tzedakah. Nidre Tzedakah and the Chiyuv Tzedakah. So on the one hand, is it like Prias Balchov, uh, you know, mitzvah, is it like repaying a loan? Or is it like, uh, you know, buying Dalad Minim? What do you or call it like? Or, or is it like Pidgin Aben and Hanaka and, and Erechem? The answer is, uh, it depends what you emphasize in Tzedakah. Meaning Tzedakah is, the money part of Tzedakah is not incidental like it is on, on the extreme of ritual mitzvot where you have to make a, um, you know, you have to buy the matzah, you have to buy the minim, you have to build the sukkah, you know, you have to buy tzitzes, you have to buy tefillin, you know, but they're not financial in any respects. But it's also on the surface, not exactly like priyas balcho mitzvah, or is it? Remember the ra'ah and the radvaz and the ritva, all of whom said that an ani is like a balchov, He's like a malva. You have to pay him like you have to pay back a debt. Now, of course, how did he become the debtor? How, how does the usher become the debtor and the and the ani become the um, the creditor? That's a really good question. That is for sure because of the mitzvah satora. But the mitzvah satora transforms the relationship and now it's mostly like a financial one. So it's almost like it's on the border of Priyas Don't you time. have the same problem? Or, one second, one second, one second. Or does it remain mostly, predominantly a, a, um, a, a mitzvah obligation, you know, but with a financial component? Maybe it's like, you know, Pigeon Aben. Or maybe because it isn't as specific as Pigeon Aben or Hanek Tanik, you know, uh, maybe it's even less. Maybe it's just like you know, an obligation to donate. You know, it's it, but it comes from within. It's never about the ani. The answer is that is exactly what we have been discussing. So by showing you the range, what I'm trying to show is um, when we look, when we think of tzedakah, and we think of you know some of the issues. We're talking about bracha. Is there a concept of lishma? Is there a tour of onen? Is there a din of osik b'mitzvah? Potter mila mitzvah. Is there a din of are we, are we fia, which we're going to get back? Fia mean coercion or not? So all these questions, you know, are are related to the issue, the big issue that we're discussing, and that uh, is the position. Is the financial ex, is executed financially. Is it mostly a financial obligation about sharing the money or about being obligated, you know, to this other person? Or, or no, it's mostly a ritual obligation. It's a mitzvah, although one which expresses itself in a monetary way. It's done in a financial way, but that's just the derech. That's the method of implementation. It's not the main chiyuv. Um, Remember that afilo ani chayev lases tzedakah la'ane chavera. So the answer, in my opinion, is it's somewhere on that spectrum. It's not clear. So is it surprising that the Rishonim or that the Achronim debate many of these issues and um, again you know the ones I'm talking about Bracha and Onein and Oseik and Kviya and we'll see a couple of more in a minute um, is it so surprising that I, should we compare it to Priyas Balchov Mitzvah should we compare it to Pidgin Aben should we compare it to Hanek Tanik should we compare it to to um, you know Mitzvah Sasei like building a sukkah and 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 um, and bringing the dalad minim, 
So now we can really understand that there are a range of mitzvos, you know, in which money plays a role, but a, a different kind of a role. And um, that there are all these issues that are linked to it and all these precedents that could become relevant. So what I'd like to show, well, I'll take questions in one more second, but what I would like to continue in the continuation to show is that there are, are some patterns in Rishonim too, particularly the Rajba and the Ran and, um, and some of the other Akronim. But I want to try to show that the Rajba mostly thought that Sadaka mostly downplayed the financial um, or, or at least Chosha Mishpat part of tzedakah and saw it more as a mitzvah, whereas the Ran um, mostly saw tzedakah as a monetary obligation, you know, of a very serious nature. So that's what I'm going to try to show in the continuation. I'm going to go back to something we started discussing last week, which is the question of timing. Um, like how much time do you have to discharge your obligation? Then I want to talk about suffake. What happens if you're not sure whether you're obligated or not? Do you apply the din of Motsu Michavero, Alavam Raya, or Safek Dorai Salachom. I'll explain as we go forward. And then I want to go back to the concept of kfia, of coercion and enforcement itself, to show that there are different levels of that in different mitzvahs and try to see what the level of that is in tzedakah. Before I do that, it seemed like there were a couple of um, questions um, in the audience. In the, uh, in the, uh, uh, the, the, the raw, the ritvah, we're trying to say that the uh, ani is like a balchol. Yeah. You know? uh, I mean, like, like a malva. Yeah. Uh, the problem is that the Mishra Tzedakah is not directed at ani A, B, C, or D. It's directed at the ani as a group, or the avion as a group. So right. the ani really has a problem when he says, you owe me money, because the, the obligation of the person is to give to aniyam, not necessarily to give to him. So how do we reconcile right. that? Well, that's a great point, but just remember, I'll go back to what I said about the low sase um, in response to um, to Jacob Gold's question from before about like, you know, you're, you're Shomer Aveda or you're giving a shear and somebody knocks on your door, you know, um, there is also like a, a timing issue. This goes to the first question that we're going to discuss, like when are you obligated and, you know, to whom are you ever obligated to somebody specific when there is somebody who is um, deserving of support, who you are encountering. Meaning I think part of what I've been trying to show, which is that there are two different aspects, two different dinim. I've been suggesting it breaks up with the lav and the assay is the assay of pasok, tiftach, and nasum titain inheres in you, in the donor. Um, and, you know, as you said, then there's a certain flexibility, like who are you going to give it to? What kind of causes? You know, all aniyam are also good causes. Is the position that the Ra'ah and the Ridvan and the other Rishonim are taking is that if I'm going to give a certain amount of tzedakah, that's going to happen, yeah. okay? Right. I'm obligated to give it to the first person that comes? No, 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 no. Well, that's no, what it looks no. like right now. The only is no, there. No, no, no. He's like a, he's like no, a no, 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 no. I have to give him. They were trying to explain why, even though tzedakah is a, a mitzvah sasei shamat and tzachar and according to the Gemara Nechulin, therefore, there should be no kfia because Ein Bezdin was harin, Bezdin Shalmatim was harin allow. That is that Torah says what's going to happen in terms of punishment and reward. There should be no need for anything, you know, um, further than that. So they were trying to explain this isn't a typical mitzvah. That's true for a mitzvah. This is a chi of when it applies, there is a chi of mamo. There's a monetary component. And therefore, it doesn't fall under the rubric of that Gemara and Chulin. So what do they mean as a monetary obligation? They said, well, Aniyam, they meant Klali, generally. The Aniyam world, the Aniyam, you know, um, tribe, you know, have a financial claim. But why do we have to fall, fall back on all Sikh Mitzvah, but I'm in a Mitzvah region? Just simply say no, 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 I'm talking about two different things. Now, this one, this one, 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 so let me finish my sentence. So the answer, so they're talking in general about the Mitzvah of Tzedakah. When I was talking about Osik Mitzvah and Osik, I'm talking about the Rambam's, you know, um, insight, which is that if you encounter an Ani, a legitimate Ani, that's a legitimate Ani, who, um, you know, who needs the money, who is, whose plight, you know, is, uh, is so legitimate and, and, and who is in need, then you're also, that, that's where the love of Lotikpos Etzion Chalot Amit Slavavcha 
applies. At that moment, you might say that this particular Ani, albeit because he's a member of the club of Aniim, it's not a very good club, but he's a member of, of the mm -hmm. world of Aniim, and therefore, but he's the one who's encountering you right now and confronting you. So he himself has a claim on you, not for everything that you owe for the year, but for something, for something. That's but only this is going to be very, or is that a generally accepted view? Um, I mean, the Rambam is so influential. Just the way that the Rambam formulated the lab got picked up by the Shulchan Aruch. So I think it's really, um, you know, pretty much a normative view but about the lab. But again, that doesn't mean you have to give all your tzedakah money to one, you know, Ani. It just means that you have to give him something. Can't ignore him is what you're saying. Yeah. If he, assuming he's legitimate and he is, you know, is confronting you. Um, as I say, what that means in terms of like, you know, we... There's a whole different issue to contend with, but that's not for now. That's like fraud and tzedakah. And also like the status, like, you know, like certain people, you know. My um, grandfather used to say that the fraudsters are, are the ones that give us the ability not to have to give everybody. If there were no fraudsters, we'd be obligated to give everybody. Right. So that's a great, that's a terrific line, but it's so true. Um, and also like if somebody, you know, is collecting in a room, I don't think that that is necessarily a personal... Uh, but there's a concept of al tashuv dach nichlam, you know, if a person's going, you know, from person to person to person in a big room, as opposed to like, you know, a personal appeal to to an individual, you know, um, some people are going to give him, and some people are not going to give him, and he's not. You can sure. usually give later. You get an envelope. I'm saying it's not like yeah, it's going to go away. Yeah, you can give it. There's always opportunities. And sometimes you just uh, can't give because you've given already, or or sometimes you don't have to give because. You know, somebody else is giving. Like somebody should give him, but uh, but it's meaning it's not a person. In my opinion, that I can't prove. I'm just telling you instinctively. If somebody like you know is working a room, that's not the same as uh, you know as what the Rambam and and the Gemara are talking about when they're talking about you know confronting an uni. That that's much more personal. Does it make you a difference if he's people in the room for himself you know, or somebody else? What does it make a difference if he's collecting for himself or somebody else? I do think so. In terms of Alta Shuv Dach Nichlam, I think it makes a difference. Anyways, but uh, that, that's not for now. So let, let's go back to the question of timing for a moment. And I want to show you the Rajba, three Rajbas that I think are Lashitasa, are consistent, and two Rans, you know, in the process. Um, were there any other questions before we move to that? No? Okay, great. Okay, so let's go back to um, the Gemara and Rosh Hashanah that we started discussing last week. In the end, I just want to uh, get that back on the record. So this is the first Gemara Makomos on this topic. We know, our, we also have the second one, but uh, let's go to the first one just for a minute. So the first Gemara Makomos had a Gemara in Rosh Hashanah, on Daf Dalid, and another Gemara on Daf um, Daf Vav. So the Gemara says on Dalit Amalal, this is on page two, I'm not of the latest Marmakomos, but the ones before. The Gemara said, I read it last week, but I just want to go back to it because we didn't finish with it. Tonra, I'm also, we've provided much more perspective now in terms of the range of other mitzvahs. Tonra Bana. So the Gemara says here, anybody have that? It's on page two of the previous Marmakomos. Tonra Bana. This is Bavli Rosh Hashanah, Dalit Omid Aleph, and Omid Beis. That's what we care about. Maisros, Bechor, Maisro Pesach, Lekat, Shikopeya, Kivin Shavrola Gimel Regalim, over Bibal Ta'acher. Once you have gone past, you, you know, you haven't discharged this obligation, you made a ned there, let's say. You know, you, you obligated yourself to, uh, to give tzedakah. And you didn't, you know, do it. And three regalim have passed. Once three regalim pass, you also violate bal ta'acher, right? You, that you shouldn't delay your the fulfillment of your neder. Reb Shimon Omer Gimel regalim kasidron, the Chagamatzos tchila. Reb Shimon says it's not Gimel regalim. It's it's the cycle beginning with Chagamatzos, like a year's worth of regalim. It could be five regalim, right? Because if you start now, for example, you know, so right. Shavuos, right, and then Sukkot, then you start from Pesach. You have to start again 
you know, Pesach, um, Shavuos, Sukkos. So it can be anywhere between three and five regalim, which we'll get to in just a second. That's a very interesting phenomenon. Rab Shimon, that's what Rab Shimon says. Rab Meir disagrees. He said, no, even one regal is Baal Ta'acher. Okay, great. So according to this Gemara, it seems like if a person um, pledges for tzedakah that he's got, you know, somewhere between three and five regalim, you know, Except before, he, at least before, yeah, at least before he violates Baal Ta'acher. Okay. Now, again, when you think about this, like it's an interesting question in general, like when, when there's a halachic obligation, like what is the timetable, right? In, in general, it could go anywhere between like immediate um, to indefinite, you know, and in between. According to a mayor, it could be, could be eight days, no? Maybe it depends. Maybe, maybe it's one day. Maybe it's three yeah. days. Maybe it's seven days. Maybe it's 30 days. Maybe it's a year. Yeah. Maybe it's one regal. Maybe it's three regal. And maybe it's three regal in Kisidra. I mean, there are different, um, um, again, models of time in, in, you know, in Torah obligations. You know, so it's an interesting question in general. This is about Bal Ta'acher Nidro. And I think that the key is to figure out you know, because these are, remember, these are obligations that you, 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 you are, are, you know, you have um, imposed upon yourself mostly. Um, and therefore, you know, it, we're talking about you haven't yet, you know, fulfilled them. So I think the subtle question is something we've talked about a lot in other cases, but, you know, what's the difference between not yet having done it, right, or, or delaying? or abstaining, or, you know, completely, you know, rejecting. Or the converse of that, is there an, a law of not paying besides not delaying? Or is it those, what if the guy never pays? Uh, let's say he pays well, after after, yeah, yeah, right, so that's it. Are there two law of them involved? One not to delay and one that he has to pay? It not, I mean, not it pay. seems like Baal Ta'acher is the only thing involved, because again, you can always pay, you know. So, so again, you might violate. No separate, no separate law that says that if you make a nether, you have to pay it. If you don't pay it, that, that's because if the guy pays it after after the time frame, right? Paul Sacher is a way of saying no. If you if you can never pay it, that's called lo yachel devaro. So there's two law. Yeah, but lo yachel devaro is you're never going to violate that as long as you, in theory, could still do it, but you are going to violate bal ta'acher nidro. What I'm trying to just show is. That even bal ta'acher is, you know, when you think about it, you know, say, oh, I, it's not I'm delaying, I just haven't done it yet, you know. And in some cases, you delay for so long that you've practically, you know, bal yachel it, you know, but maybe, or, or just formally you haven't, but you almost have. And there's a lot in between, right? So I think it's always a function of like what the, you know, what the availability is. Why would you delay and why would you? You know, let's say it's available. Does that matter, right? Does that subtly push it, you know, across the line from being I haven't done it yet to I'm delaying to I'm rejecting or I'm turning my back on my yeah. obligation? It's hard to know, right? Are you suggesting the Rambam in circumstances to not paying? Oh, so we'll see. So the the uh, just by the way, just as an example, I mean the Rambam famously says, you know, Brismila. Right, Brismila is a, obviously a very crucial core obligation. Kares. So um, it's a mitzvah seishish bakares, right? So it's really, really serious. Um, but um, there's an interesting argument. I Meaning, the Ravid says that you know um, once day, once day eight comes and you're every you're, minute, gonna, you're, you're over at kares, and the Ram says no until you die. And you have the you still have the opportunity to fix things. You don't violate the karis. Doesn't mean you don't violate the assay, but you don't. You don't at least you don't trigger the karis. I'm just giving it as an example. Um, so like here, like you know, you you have an obligation to discharge. You know what what's the time frame going to be? So our gemara, the first gemara in Rosh Hashanah says gimel regalim kisidra. But the next gemara in Rosh Hashanah says beficha Taka amarava. This is the one on Vav Aleph, who tzedakah mechayev alei ala alter, 
that the chi of tzedakah is immediate. Wow, different. And the Gemara explains why. My time, the kai because the aniyim are there. And they're waiting. Says the Gemara Pshita. Isn't that obvious? The Archaim Yanim, of course, you should pay immediately. Now, the same, Akiva de Binyan and the Karbanos Ksiva, since this Pasuk, Beficha, Zutsudaka, is in the context of Karbanos, had the Avri Gimel Regalim ke Karbanos. So you might think you have Gimel Regalim. Kamash Malan, therefore, we're being told, Hasam Hudetalin Rachman of Regalim. That's because their regalim are factor. The aniyam are, are, you know, are, are abundant, and they're waiting, and you can't, you know, you can't put them off. So obviously, this is a seeming stira. This is an apparent contradiction. Gemara Davdalit says gimel regalim kesidron, and the Gemara here says the altar. So what gives? So Tosa says it's not a stira, it's not a contradiction. It depends on the circumstances. Tosa says, Tosa says, listen, if there are aniyim that are pressing you, then you have to pay immediately. If there are no aniyim, you don't have to, you know, look around to find them. You've got Gimel Regalim to send uh, your check to Tzedakah. So that is an interesting phenomenon. In a way, what Tosis is saying sounds exactly like there are two aspects. If there is a pressing need, then it's like a financial obligation, and then you have to take care of it right away. If not, it's like other mitzvos, and the neder you know, is not violated until, 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 um, until Gilmar Regalim. And if your nether has a time frame on it, what happens then? What? I will give uh, in 90 days. Not no, no, days. that's something else, right. Does, do, does the cycle start at that point? No, 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 no. We're talking about here, you just made a, made a, made a point. No, what I'm saying is if I, if I say I'm, I'm, I, I promise to give X in 90 days from now, does right, then that, it's, that, and probably yeah. it will be Bal Yachel after 90 days. No, so does that mean that the same three-year golem cycle and everything starts at No, 90? no, no. I'm saying if you specify, that's a different story in the Dharam. We're talking about Nidrate Staka, but, you know, he just said, I'm, I'm going to give. He didn't specify. So he's actually worse well, off if he specifies. I think so. That's what it sounds like, from what you're saying. Right. Which is counterintuitive, but... It's, uh, uh, I'm not sure if it's counterintuitive, but... I mean, would there be a altar if he, if he specified? No, no, no. So the guy says he's going to give in 90 days. Why should he be worse off than the guy said, I'm going to give today? He was allowed three regalim. He should be allowed three regalim. Right, because it's just days. open-ended. It's open-ended. So you could have thought it was even indefinite. I understand. I'm saying that's... But Rava says if there are neem, it's immediate. Anyways, so I'm not going to read the Rajba inside because I think I read it last week, but let me just remind everybody the Rajba. The Rajba didn't like Tosis. Answer. Why? Because he said, what is Kaimya neem? What, who cares whether Kaimianim? There's an equivalent of, says the Rajba, there's an equivalent of Kaimianim in, in Karbanos too. Let's say he's, he's visiting the base of Mikdash and the Kaimianim are ready and he's got a Karban and he could do it right now. So why does he get Gebel Regalim? It's the equivalent of Kaimianim, meaning the. <laughs> The Rajba understood the concept of kaimi aniyim is not something unique to aniyim and tzedakah, but as a universal well, idea. Because the corner am I getting a piece of it? What's that? Because the corner am I getting part of the korban? I, I, I don't think that's relevant. No, 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 that's not the point. The, the, but the way the Rajba understood kaimi aniyim is that if there's the opportunity to do it, if, if I make an obligation, Right, so I'm not obligated, you know, to um, immediately, you know, find a way to implement it. But if there's an opportunity to implement right away, and I turn my back on it, that's a problem. So for the Raj, that I don't think that's what Tosis had in mind at all. Let me say it this way: Tosis had in mind that kaimianim is a special din in tzedakah, because. In addition to the obligation of the donor to give, you know, 
know, an opportunity to cultivate uh, generosity and philanthropy and to, you know, rack up some credits with the Rabboni Shalolam, you know, to use your material uh, goods for good things. So in addition to that, there's also, you know, the Mechaev of the Aniyim, Hakaim Aniyim. That's how, the, I, in my opinion, that's what Tulsa's meant. That's not comparable in, in Carbonos. What is, what's the urgency to give Carbonos now or, as opposed to later? The Rabboni Shalom doesn't need it, and the Kohanim don't need it, and the Beis Amitas doesn't need it. How did the Rajba understand Tosas? He didn't even consider the possibility that Kaim Yaniyam is the Mechaev, that the urgency of the Yaniyam have the rights to be taken care of. No. The Rajba said it's a mitzvah. So what's Kaim Yaniyam? Kaim Yaniyam just means you have if you have an earlier opportunity to fulfill and you ignore it, that's not Shevaltas anymore. That's this not, not passive. That's not, not oh, the obligation not to bypass a mitzvah. Right. So it's almost like, you know, um, you know, al you know, but like, you know, on steroids, I guess you'd say. Meaning mm -hmm. um, that's how he understands Akaimianium. So he says, oh, so what, let's say you had the same thing in Karbanos. You happen to be in the base of Mikdash. You all do have an animal. There are Kohen and ready to, you know, to work on it. So why why should you delay, you know, for another regal or three regalim or five regalim, by not doing it now when you have the opportunity, and everything's in place? It's almost like you're making a statement, you know, that you are abstaining or that you are, you know, negating, not just say, oh, you're not. You haven't done it yet. That's how the Rajbah understands it. He says, my shna, this is the line in the Rajbah, my shna tzdaka, my shna karbanos, hakaimi aniyim, hakaimi mikdash, hakaimi kohanim, hakaimi karbanos. How can you compare those two things? The, the, the idea of the aniyim isn't that it's, there's an opportunity and therefore delaying now is like, you know, an egregious slap in the face, bito. That's not the idea. The idea is that the ani has... Is, is part of the story here, part of the Chiyuv. So how come the Rajput doesn't see it that way? I think because he sees Tzedakah predominantly as a mitzvah, not as a Chiyuv Bamo. So I want to support this by a, Ram, a Rajba and a Ran, another Rajba and Ran. So the next Bar Mokom, you see the Ran in the Darim, Dav Zayin of Aleph, talks about the following issue. So the Gemara in the Darim and Dav Zayin, it talks about yesh yad le tzedaka, yesh yad le kiddushin, yesh yad le peya. What does it mean, yesh yad le? Literally, the words mean, you know, is there a hand for kiddushin, a hand for peya? Yeah. The, the concept of yadayim is the idea of, let's say you use like um, short form. Like we know what you mean, or we think we know what you mean, but you haven't like formally articulated it according to Dine Torah. So you do some something that implies that you want to uh, marry somebody or that you want to give tzedakah, right? But it's not, you haven't really formal, formally articulated it. So the Gemara debates whether yesh yad le or ain yad le The word yad means like, you know, you you get the, does the, does the, you know, kind of gist of what you're trying to convey, is that good enough, you know, or do you actually need a formal, you know, um, formulation of it. So the Gemara discusses Yesha the Tzaka or Ein Yad the Tzaka. Yesha the Yesha the Kiddushin or Ein Yad the Kiddushin. What's that? You could, you could call it an abbreviated instrument. Excellent. That's really great. Abbreviated, like an abbreviated instrument. And the question is, is that you know, is that uh, you know, brevity, you know, effective? That abbreviated instrument effective, or or not? But in the Dharam, uh, we have a whole discussion about what is an accepted, abbreviated, or similar. So you could certainly also, I mean, in Kedusha, there's a concept of Amira. The Gemara actually, in the beginning of Kedusha, talks about, you know, what happened if Nasan Huv, Amrahi, and, you know, and different Lashonos, Hariat Lintu, Hariat Ishti, Hariat, you know, we use, we're very strict, you know, Hariat Makudesh, so Kedas Moshe Israel. But, um, Basically, um, that's the question. Can you use this kind of an abbreviated, you know, um, you know, you're conveying your intentions, but you're not formally expressing, you know, the, in, you know, in, in legal, you know, terms, 
you know, what you're supposed to, the, the level of your commitment or your, or your intentions. So the Gemara is, uh, leaves these questions as a bay and of shita, which means that they didn't come to a resolution in the end. So now the post game had to decide, what, what are we going to do? So remember that there are always two paradigms, at least two paradigms, but it's in this case, two paradigms in Suffolk, if you have doubt. So what one rule is, Sveika Darai Salachomra. I mean, a, a Suffolk and matters, Torah matters, you're, you're always um, Machmir. Or maybe the Ram doesn't hold this, but, but we'll leave that out for or now. Except for the Suffolk, because in Mandora, for example, we have Kinuis and things, you know, nicknames and things that are said. And, and I'm, I'm saying the Gemara is a position that certain <coughs> things are known. So even though he didn't say it in a formal way, it's the same as it is. And vice versa. Right, but the Gemara is, mis- the Gemara, the problem is this. The Gemara wants to know, Yeshur ein yad le tzedakah, Yeshur ein yad le kiddushin, Yeshur ein yad le peah. And the Gemara leaves leaves it as a suffix. It's a bayad lo they don't They don't come to a conclusion. Now the question is, if you're a posake and you're confronted with this Gemara's left open, what are you going to do? So one possibility is to say, it's and be machmir. But remember, there's another component, and that is, there's another aspect. Motzi mechavero, Allah, Araya. Whenever money is involved, we usually say, Sheval Tasa on it. You don't do anything. And there's no individual to be Motzi from him. That's the point I was making earlier. In other words, there's no individual who can come up and say, I want well, I, I mean, I, any, I, I guess. No, but remember. That, there's no, there's no, nobody but, who's, who's, right. a, who's a recipient. Okay. So remember, Ruvain, who, who is a, uh, you know, in a position to give tzedakah, he yeah. made some sort of a uh, dubious, um, abbreviated commitment. And we want to know, is that a real commitment or not? So the question is, is that Motsu Mechavala of Araya? And therefore, you know, we're not sure, and therefore we can't force him to give tzedakah. Or is it safek darai salachomra? So look at the Ran. The Ran says, Le'inin alacha b'kidushin aktinan l'chomra. T'yesh yad. Kivin t'bayin l'ayif shat havalei safek darai salachomra. The Ran says, when it comes to kidushin, safek darai salachomra, therefore it seems like he married her, then we treat it as a marriage, at least requiring a get. U'bepeyu tzedakah kasav harajba, when it comes to matnas aniyim and sadaka, the Rajba writes, we also say, misafek, right? Sveika darai salachomra, right? And he's obligated to give the money. Is it one and one moment? The chen kasav the bayan lo the sugin the esh tzaka v'kaim alanami called take a disur lechomra. Usually we pass in the Chumra when wherever we don't have a resolution. That's fine. Here's the main part. Says the Ran. Abal. However, this idea that we conclude in this suffix. Lachomra, right? The nearer she hiskim gam kein lozeh harajba, and it seems like this is the Rajba's ruling. The tamani aleyan, he says, I'm astonished. Shari sugim for eshes besof azro avalachaim in chulin. She suffik mamun aniyim is suffik mamun dazinu by lekula. I don't want to go into the Gushin Kedushin or or tzedaka now. Tzedaka. Okay, Kedushin is an is is there an Tzedakah is, is, is mamonus, no? Right. He says, Tzedakah, I agree with the Psak, that it's fake al-chomra, but he says, Tzedakah is ma- like ma'nus aniyim, and the Gemara says in Chulin that ma'nus aniyim is, is motu mechavero al-avaraya. Listen, go to the last, next line. Alma fake al Turn the page if you can, if you, those of you who have it. Um, just one second, if I have it. Um, okay. I don't seem to have it. Anyways, the the um, the upshot of it all is that the Rajba says Safek Tzedakah 
is a Safek mitzvah, a Safek iser, and it's a chumrah. And the Ran says that a Safek tzedaka is, is a Safek mamon, and it's motzim mechaver of araya. So I think I'm guessing, but I'm not guessing. I'm speculating. <laughs> Hopefully, it's intelligent speculation that the Rajba in these two places is consistent. The Rajba in Rosh Hashanah thinks that Kaimianiyam is just like no different in, in Mali, you know, Maishnot, Staka, Maishnot, you know, Karbanos. I mean, there's no special monetary obligation. It's a monetary methodology of fulfilling the mitzvah. In other words, what I, what I started this, this year with, which was there are a range of different mitzvahs. Some mitzvahs, money plays a peripheral role. Some, mit, some mitzvahs are all about the obligation and the monetary obligation. And then there are a bunch of mitzvahs in between, right? Things like pigeon aben and hanakas eved, you know, and tzedakah and nidre tzedakah, which you also might distinguish between, you know, as opposed to priyas balchov mitzvah, malva velove, or building a sukkah or buying tzitzes or, or things of that sort. So I think that the Rajva was pretty convinced that, you know, tzedakah is mostly a mitzvah, even though it's expressed in a monetary fashion. Um, and therefore you should say, I think the Rajva would have been very happy that the tour and Shulchan Aruch codify the dinam of tzedakah in Yoradea, in Isar Veheter, not in Chosha Mishpat. And the Rambam? Well, the Rambam actually codified it in Hilchus Matnas Aniyim, which is interesting, in Zroim. Anyways, so I think that there is also a third Rajva. And that third Rajva, I don't think I'm going to finish tonight, but we'll try. Well, we'll make headway a little. Goes back to the question of Kfi. Remember, the Gemara says that there is Kfi of Itzaka. You can coerce <coughs> the collection of tzedakah. So what does coercion really mean? We already ran into the problem of matan skara b'tzedah. Like, you know, there shouldn't be coercion here because the Torah says, l'mani v'rach Hashem that we discussed already. We'll hopefully get back to it one more time just to kind of, you know. We're not supposed to make a rule when the Torah already gives the... the yeah. Uh, but we said the Ra'a and the Radvaz and the Ritva and so on, we're all saying, yeah, that rule of Matan Skar Batseda doesn't apply here because this is more like a financial obligation. Okay, so that's one issue. There's another issue. And that is, when we say this Kfiya, what do we mean by that? So the most extreme level of Kfiya is the idea that your property secures your obligation, your commitment. Like Prius, like you know, like Shibudim, like uh, a, a debtor, a real debtor, right? Ruvain lent money to Shimon. Shimon has to pay him back. If you hold Shibudim or Isa, then you can collect even the Chasim Shibudim. And if not, you can still collect. You know, can you collect his? You know, his property Shalobafanov? Probably. We're talking about Bezdin. Yeah, Bezdin. And simply has the Hefker, Bezdin, Hefker. No, uh, without Hefker, Bezdin, Hefker. Just, you know, the, the other guy through Bezdin, without Hefker, Bezdin. Hefker, Bezdin works for everything. But you, you can understand that we try to um, avoid, that. Uh, avoid it as much as possible. Yeah, it's a nightmare. You know, it's a necessary tool. You know, last resort. Know, yeah, very much a last resort. So, um. You know, the Gemara says in Masechet Ksuvos on Pezayin that, you know, Kofen al If somebody doesn't want to build a sukkah or buy Dalad Minim, you can force him. But you probably, that doesn't mean that you can, you know, grab well, his, you can confiscate his property. But it only says by those two. I never heard that. By Dalad Minim, it says you can force someone to buy them. No, it doesn't say anything about buying them. It just says, Kofen al mitzvah sasein. The Gemara gives an example. The Gemara gives the example of a building a sukkah, 
you know, um, you know, uh, bringing the Dalit Minim. It doesn't say exactly what the Kfiyah is. By the way, does that mean that they hold that the building is, so, is, is a mitzvah? Is it, so well, that's one of the Gemara. The unto itself, no? So when I talk about uh, that topic, I always bring that Raya. <laughs> <laughs> Not just me, other people have also. Because it, it talks about building a sukkah, right? Even though the Pashtos, that's more of a Heksher mitzvah than it is a mitzvah. But the, um, there's also a Mishnah, the Mishnah in Shavuos, and it's just not in our topic now, but the Mishnah in Shavuos um, in the uh, end of the third parak um, gives example of Nishba Levat tell us a mitzvah. Let's say a person takes a Shavuah to cancel a mitzvah. So he says, uh, I'm not going to build a sukkah. Mm-hmm. Another proof. Again, so and some of the, the Rishonim say, that doesn't mean it. Labdafka means he's not going to sit in the sukkah. But the real, the language of the Mishnah is I'm not going to build a sukkah. Anyways, good support for the Shiltos, who <laughs> says, uh, mitzvah lemivna, you know, uh, metalalasa. It's a mitzvah to build a, a sukkah. Anyways, um, oh, so there are two, there are, you know, there are th- let's say there are um, three levels of kviya. One is to, you know, to physically force someone, you know, to pay when he's obligated. But that doesn't mean you can confiscate his money. It just means you can put even physical pressure. You can punish him physically until he does it. Well, why way. does that take priority if somebody won't pay for kids' Jewish education? I'm saying that for their own kids. Like, wh- why do we pick that one? Let's say, someone refuses, let's say someone refuses to send his kid to a Jewish school and yeah. makes the kid go to public school. Can we force him to pay for his kids' Jewish education? Or that's, that's all it means yeah. more important. I mean... That's a great question. That's a really controversial uh, issue. One of the things we're going to finish up with next week. But if you wanted to see very quick, uh, well, how well, goes well, my Munoz? Well, well, next week we're doing Yanni Shrus, right? Ah, you mean the okay. week after? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, how goes my Munoz? It's at the same time though, next week, right? Yes, if, that's, if that works well for you. Whatever is good that's for fine. you. Sorry, but it's fine. The how goes my Munoz? Um, if you look here in this, the, the newer Mar that we have, on page, um, since you asked about schooling, because that's a great point. Like, you know, what about the mitzvah to to give your kids? Uh, I, I would think that has more dividends than Dalamino. Well, I'm not saying that you can confiscate money for Dalamino. I'm saying the Gemara says that there's kfiyah. It doesn't say there's kfiyah smamo, right? But as for, as for um, you know, education, uh, that's very controversial. Very controversial, but if you look on page three of the new Marmakomos, look at Hagos Maimunios, Hilchos Talmud Torah, Perak Aleph Halacha Aleph. Everybody have that on page three? Um, this is a quote in there. On page three. Page three, the second entry, it says Hagos Maimunios, Hilchos Talmud Torah, Perak Aleph Halacha Aleph. Oh, yes, yeah. So the this is a tshuva of the Maram Murtenberg. It's a cuss of Maram, the Kaifinon lay. We do impose, we do coerce the lamdam to teach, right? Oh, liskar lahem balamdim. Okay, Jacob? We can run with the Maram Rittenberg. Not everybody agrees. The Maishna Hayase, the Vilimaritam Osamas Benechem, Misharase, the Kaifina Lakayim, Kamo Ase de Sukkah. But what's fascinating is actually this is a very interesting Agos Mamunio, so I'm happy you asked about it. So this is a very extreme view. Not everybody agrees with this. We'll talk about it in two weeks when we finish this up. But the... Um, Could you Maram translate Murtenberg, Maram Murtenberg is saying that when there's an obligation to do a mitzvah, that includes um, financial confiscation, meaning to, to hire a mohel, um, to, you know, to teach your children or to, you know, put them to hire a, a malamed for them. Um, and he compares it to a balchov. He compares it to a debtor. Wow. I mean, your obligation to fulfill mitzvos, you know, is is of that magnitude. 
However, as the Ksosachoshan points out, this is a very long Ksosachoshan here. Um, so I'm not going to go through right now because uh, we're already at the end of our time. But the Ksosachoshan says that in his opinion, you have to distinguish between different types of well, mitzvah. Every Yisr is a, is a momentous factor also. What is? Every Yisr becomes a, a, a momentous also. So based on the Kfiyah, that according to the Maram Rutenberg, that's a very big that's extreme. extreme position. Right. The Kso says, no, it depends on our question. And he formulates it like we've been discussing. He says, depends whether the mitzvah in question is more like a mitzvah or more like a chi of mamo. And then he discusses tzedakah. So let me just leave you with this thought. We'll discuss the Kso's, not next week, but the week after. Let me leave you with this thought. And that is that the uh, Rajba of all Rishonim in Ksuvis, uh, and Mem Tesem and Aleph, we'll read it inside when we continue and finish this in Yitz Hashem in two weeks, says that, you know, takes the view that there's the, the least amount of kfia possible. I mean, you can verbally pressure him. You might even physically be able to pressure him. But you can never confiscate his money, even in even Bifanov. Lo nachtinam l'nechsei afilo Bifanov. Even if he's present, you can't confiscate, you can't go into his home or, you know, or take money from him. Why? He says, because it's a mitzvah. It's not a chiyamamon. And the Rambam has a compromise view. The Rambam in Luchas Matan Sani in Perak Zayin, Allah says that if a person refuses to give tzedakah when he's obligated, nachtin on the nechse b'fanav. In his presence, you can actually even confiscate his property. But it's clear that if you were traveling, you weren't there, you can't do it absent. Why is this regarded as a question of either or rather than but both? What do you mean? It's What's both a mitzvah and a chi of mamon. Well, that's the question, which is it predominant? Which, what? The question is, you know, I think that the assay and the lav make it both. It seems so to, to me. I, so we're on the same team. That's good. I'm happy to have you. <laughs> but what I'm trying to show is that the Rajba didn't go that far. He thought it was more of a mitzvah. And that the Ra'a actually went even further and thought it was more like a Balchov. So I agree with you. I think the best view is the, the way I understand the Balitosis and the Rambam, which is that it's both two different aspects. Two different aspects. But the Ra'a and the Rajba represent extremes. So the Rajba says, there's no kfia here, it's a mitzvah. The, the Ran in, in, um, in uh, Ksuvas says, quotes the Rajba, says, I think he's totally wrong. He says, I even think the Rambam is too moderate because the Rambam said that you can't collect in his absence, only in his presence. The Ran says, in my opinion, if the man is a man of means and therefore he has a full obligation of tzedakah, then, you know, it's like Priyas Balchov Mitzvah. You could, you could take his money even Shalom of. Does the Rosh follow his Rebbe's view? I mean, the Maram Rutenberg about uh, Hichos Talmud Torah? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not familiar with... with it's a pretty Rebbe. wild concept. Who, who can take the money? Who has the rights to take the money? I mean, in, 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 any John Doe can just go take the no, money? This is, the, this is for Besden, no? Yeah, this is a Besden. This is like a formal... Uh, you know, okay. Yeah, but, so, the, so there's warning, there are letters, there's communication. No, no, no. And yeah, everybody agrees that that's the last, that it's the last resort too. Modina, okay. you have to, you know, first you try to try every means. Encourage yeah, them. Strong arm. Yeah, 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 of course. Okay. So uh, what I wanted, what I'm trying to show is that this is a very lively, vibrant debate about mitzvahs in general. But, you know, the general view about mitzvahs is that kfiyah is, is a, a limited concept, even though it is a concept. But when it comes to mitzvahs like tzedakah, right, which are, you know, which have elements both of mitzvah and chi of mamon, you know, how much kfiyah then, that becomes an interesting debate. So we'll try to follow through with that. I'm going to show you Shulchan Aruch, what it says, and then the Ksos and so on, some of the distinctions. Uh, we'll finish with this in Mir Tashem in two weeks. But for now, just remember that the Rajba is totally consistent. I mean, the Rajba said, 
right? It's it's not the 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 kaimi aniim is no different than kaimi karbanos. It's a mitzvah. And then the Rajba said, if you have a suffake, you have a doubt, you treat it like suffake mitzvah, lechumra, not suffake momo and lakula. And then the Rajba said, for that reason, there's no actual monetary confiscation. It's a mitzvah. And the Ran disagrees. Ran, like the Ra'a and like the Radvaz, thinks that there is a very strong um, you know, monetary obligation here in Tzedakah. Not just a mitzvah. Very fascinating argument. And you can see that it affects all sorts of um, a myriad of issues. And whether it can be then a paradigm for other things is also important. There's a debate across the spectrum of mitzvahs, like how much, you know, um, enforcement financially is there and at what level, right? So all the distinctions that we made, Priyas Balchov, you know, Alula, Vasuka, um, Hanakas Ebed, Pidjon, you know, Pidjon Aben, Arachim, Sadaka, Nidre Tzedaka, these are, this range really matters for all sorts of questions, as you can see. Okay, so I wish you all oh, a good week. Next week, can you. You them at the same time, we'll do uh, something shavuos. in advance of Shavuos. shavuos. And um, the week after that, we'll finish up with Sadaka. And then we don't have so many more weeks after that, but we'll probably have another couple of weeks. We'll try to pick one more topic in, uh, in the beginning of Al Basra. You know. Okay, looking forward. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Right. Good week, everyone. Thank you.